server? Is it the executor or is it the task inside the containers fail? When you see a failure, don't always assume it's going to be out of memory, right? Even though out of memory is so common in Spark, but it's not always out of memory. You probably have another runtime exception, which is not out of memory, right? Probably you have bad code, which is causing a runtime exception, right? So it's not always out of memory, but make sure if you're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with an out of memory issue or not in the very first place. Okay, so it will be very clear if it's an out of memory, you will see it in the logs, you know, you will see errors such as out of memory exception or the container being killed. That's another error that you will see, which indicates um, the process is being killed because the process requested more memory than it is allocated. Okay, so first identify the failure, make sure it's out of memory, right? Next. So I said there are two key components, right? The driver and the executors. Driver is actually orchestrating the execution between the executors, okay? And driver has a set of memory and each executor is assigned um, a certain amount of memory for, for, for execution. And you can control both the memory with Spark executor memory and dri Spark driver executor memory, okay? Most often you would see memory issues with executors and not with reducers. Okay, sometimes you would see issues with drivers too, but less common, you know, most, more often than not, you would see issues with executor going out of memory, you know, or task running inside the executor, running out of memory, you know, those are the usual issues you would see, right? So you can control the memory allocation for executor using Spark executor memory. So the first thing you could, think is, okay, so my, let's say your executor is already assigned 20 GB of memory, okay? So your executor is going um, out of, uh, your executors are the task running inside the executor, running out of memory, which would mean you could say like, I'm going to give more memory to my executor, you know, will that fix my problem? Maybe it will, or maybe it will not, okay? It depends on what the problem actually is. You need to identify the root cause, right? So, you know, you can, if you feel your executor or your task inside the executor is struggling for memory and the executor is not uh, assigned enough memory, by all means, you can increase the amount of memory, okay? By all means, you can increase the amount of memory. But, need, but you need to understand the memory architecture inside the executor before you can do so, okay? So you have to understand how the memory is organized inside the executor. Okay, so let's say you have four GB of memory allocated to your executor, right? 300 MB of that four GB is reserved, okay? Spark res reserved, reserves it, you don't have access to it, right? And the 60% of the rest that for four, four GB minus 300 MB and 60% of the rest goes to Spark. You know, we call it Spark memory, right? 60%. So that can be tweaked. You can adjust that with Spark memory fra fraction parameter, okay? So 60% of that goes to Spark and the rest will go to the user memory, okay? The rest will go to the user memory. All right, the Spark memory is the very important one because this is the memory maintained by Spark for two things, for storage and execution, okay? Storage is where the objects that you're cached that are going to reside. Okay, the objects that you cache will reside in the storage. Execution memory is used by Spark for execution. Okay, this is used during shuffle, aggregation, any kind of white transformation or narrow transformation. This is the place where Spark put the objects that are being currently executed or needed for execution, right? When you say out of memory, it is usually because Spark doesn't have enough execution memory. Okay, so if you are using Spark um, version less than 1.6, I would ask you to check your allocation to Spark shuffle memory fraction parameter and Spark storage memory fraction parameter. Because Spark shuffle memory fraction parameter controls the execution memory and Spark storage memory fraction parameter controls the storage memory. Okay, so there are two parameters. This is before Spark 1.6, but most production environments are, you know, are, are past that point, right? Because uh, prior to 1.6, Spark used a memory allocation called static memory allocation, 
okay or static memory manager right so in with that both the storage and the shuffle or the execution memory are static whatever you define at the time of creating the executor that's what that's what both executors uh, ex um, this the execution and storage gets right they don't have any wiggle room but after uh, 1.6 spark introduced dynamic memory manager okay so execution memory so execution memory and storage memory are dynamic within the spark memory boundary okay so let's say you're storing a lot of objects so initially both gets 50 50 of the spark memory right so remember 4 GB, 300 goes to reserve, 60% goes to Spark memory, which is 2.2 GB almost, right? After 2.2 GB, by default, storage memory gets 50%, which is 1.1 GB, and execution memory gets 50%, which is 1.1 GB, right? That's how they start. But let's say for execution, you're, you're going beyond 1.1 GB, right? With the new dynamic memory manager, that is after Spark 1.6, it is totally okay right the execution memory will start using the memory that is free in storage memory right so if the storage memory has enough space left execution memory will take it what if the storage doesn't have enough space left right again spark what it will do is it will take the objects from the storage that is from the cache and it will move it to the disk okay so it will move the objects it will evict from the memory to the disk okay and it will expand so spark always give preference to the execution memory okay so whether the storage memory has enough room or not it will make room for execution memory spark will always make room for execution memory right same with storage too so let's say we are not using the we are not utilizing the execution memory and we have a lot of execution room and execution memory but spark is a need of storage it's a need of caching right then storage memory will go beyond the 1.1 GB if needed, provided execution memory has enough room. If execution memory is already fully utilized, Spark will say, no, storage, you cannot expand anymore because you know I cannot evict anything out of execution, so you need to write it to the disk, okay? So Spark will give priority to the execution memory. All right, so Spark will give always priority to execution memory because you cannot, you, you cannot evict things from execution, right? Because the, those are being executed and Spark has to maintain those objects that, you know, to, 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 do, to, do, a, to, to do a smooth execution, okay? So memory management is more dynamic, but you need to understand how, you know, how you're allocating this, right? So storage memory, uh, storage memory by default is Spark is controlled by Spark memory storage fraction, and by default it's 50%. Right? If you feel you need more execution memory, make it 40%, right? Or make it 30% even. Give more room for execution. Remember, if ex if Spark doesn't have enough enough room for execution, that's when you get out of memory. Okay? That's that's when you get out of memory because storage can always be evicted from memory and returned to the disk. Spark cannot do the same with execution memory. So if you feel you're going to have a lot of objects in your execution memory, please, you know, reduce the storage fraction to make it like 40% or 30%, right? Okay, as, as a default, all right? So understanding the memory allocation helps, you know, helps you design your jobs better, right? But that's, that's just one piece of the puzzle. Second, you need to know how many CPU cores you have. Right? How many CPU cores is allocated to each executor? Right? So let's say you're, you have allocated two CPU cores to each executor. What that means? That means you can execute two, two tasks in parallel inside that executor. Okay? Which means you can, you, can, you can do two tasks in parallel in each executor. Right? So number of CPU cores means number of tasks that can be executed in parallel. Okay? So, you need, to, you need to be smart about deciding your number of tasks because number of partitions decides your number of tasks, okay? So if you have a big enough data set and that data set, let's say it's divided into 100 partitions, which means Spark will create 100 tasks for that job, right? So if each task has to deal with a lot of data, let's say, each task has to deal with a lot of data, 
you have a potential problem of getting out of memory because each task is overloaded, right? Each task is overloaded. So few partitions meaning fewer tasks, which means each task can be overloaded, which can cause out of memory issues, which is something you want to avoid, okay? So a good rule is for each CPU, you can assign at least two to three tasks, okay? So prepare your job and prepare the number of partitions like that with that in mind, okay? So that's, that's kind of a baseline. That's kind of a good guideline, right? For each CPU core, you can go with two to three, um, two to three tasks. Okay, so fewer partitions, you will have a problem, okay? The next one is unbalanced partition. And it's, this is, uh, you know, this symptom, this symptom is when you see, you know, almost all the tasks, you, let's say you have 100 tasks in your job, right? And 99 tasks would be done in like few minutes and then, and then you have this one task running for like 30, 40 minutes. Why that's the case? Because you got unbalanced partitions. Meaning like one partition, which is two doing, which is has a lot of data. So this task dealing with that partition has to do too much. Okay. And this is common with poorly, um, poorly created XML files or highly nested JSON files. Okay highly nested JSON files. Because you can have a JSON document and if you have a lot of nesting in that, uh, in, in that document, certain de the JSON documents can have more number of records inside the, inside the nesting than the others. Same with XML, right? So you got disproportional uh, partitions, right? Because the record can span, the record can actually span between partitions, right? So, uh, you know, that creates like unbalanced partition causing you out of memory errors uh, with tasks. So you need, to, you need to keep that in mind, right? So before I move on, you know, so those are the common out 